The World Wide Web has made us all citizens of the cybersphere. We can all contribute to online communities and discuss every topic under the sun. But when it comes to the study of citizenship, what are the most useful resources for teachers and students? We went to Chestnut Grove Secondary School in South London and asked the staff there for their top 10 recommendations. At number 10 is a website from the Imperial War Museum, designed to provoke lots of debate. Let's give media and war a chance. The site allows students to access um, information about contemporary events, media and the war, and focuses on the different wars that we've had recently. Everyone, particularly in this school, has a very strong opinion about things like the Gulf War and are interested to know the ways that the media do twist the information that we receive. The site really allows them to explore different views and to see the way in which the same material can be viewed in two different ways. They don't find it um, too frightening, which I think can be quite dangerous with something like this. The students really enjoy it as well, and it often leads to quite strong and spirited debates, which is obviously what we're looking for. We don't want students just sitting in the classroom, bored or reading information, but actually engaging and using their skills and developing their skills, analysis, evaluation, all the key things in citizenship. Resources online can be accessed by many users and renewed over and over again. At nine, it's the Recycle Zone. From a student perspective, it's really bright. It's really easy to use. You know, if you want to go on and play a game quickly, you can. If you want to go on and test what you've learned quickly, you can. If you want to find out about what can be recycled, what can be re reused, etc., it's on there. Things like um, creating recycled paper, shredding paper, um, the composting activities. Yes, they are useful for the Key Stage 3 students, but also there's enough de detail and depth that the Key Stage 4 students can really access the the information and it's fun. I think it's a lovely site, really nice looking, easy to use, student friendly and teacher friendly site. A lot of the sites on our list are sparks to inflame discussion rather than blankets to settle debate. Our teachers chose Oxfam's Cool Planet site as their number eight. Global citizenship obviously is a fairly key part um, of any curricula. Um, meeting the national curriculum requirements and Ox the Oxfam site is a very good tool um, in which to, to access that information. I think when we use the Oxfam site, uh, as teachers we're always very careful we try and give a balanced view uh, and the Oxfam site clearly has its own political message. Um, we need to qualify that with the students and make sure they understand that actually things aren't necessarily quite as simple as the Oxfam site makes out but the key information is sound. This year they've actually added the um, the teacher lesson pages with PowerPoint presentations which we can use on our smart boards and the site just it just seems to go from strength to strength it really seems to have grown um, and it's fantastic for teachers but also for students. Place at number seven is Student Voice, a site that unsurprisingly gives a voice to students. The Student Voice website um, we had a big debate over. It was a controversial choice because it's not glamorous. But we felt it was important, if you're teaching citizenship, that you have the student message across. The Student Voice website gives student opinions. It keeps students aware of their rights and what's going on in the world around them. Um, there are links to citizenship. It's not jazzy. It's not an exciting site. And it's not a site that you can base an entire lesson around. But to actually spend 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour, looking at the sort of things which young people um, are capable of and their human rights, that's a fundamental issue. And the website's very useful at, at harnessing it. The web is still a young medium, and at number six our teachers chose a website that positively reeks of youthiness. The good thing about the Call in the Shots website is it uses the same techniques that are used in music videos. It uses it appeals to young people. It's something that they feel they, they own. It uses the language that young people speak, so quite often when we find we're using this, it's the, the, the teachers who are out of touch with what's going on. They have lesson plans which are linked to the citizenship curriculum for Key Stage 3 and 4. It's a ready-made unit of work which can last for 18 hours. It covers a variety of different things. It covers attitudes to authority, it covers respect, it covers gun culture, it covers um, 
the way that young people carry themselves and the way that teenagers are viewed. It's a ready-made uh, resource. If you don't know anything about that, but your students do, that's the place to go. We're halfway through our top 10 websites for citizenship students and teachers. At number five on our list is a site from the Learning and Skills Network that's a great resource for both. Citizenship doesn't stop at the end of Key Stage 4. The Learning and Skills Network shows you some of the opportunities that you can take advantage of. It has a lot of citizenship resources which are ready-made for you. It has access to DVDs, worksheets, example of workshops. You can do a variety of different topics. Topics covered include democracy, the use of music to promote citizenship. It's also useful to realise that if you're covering Key Stage 4 citizenship and you're looking for perhaps some fresh ideas, have a look at this website. It'll give you some inspiration as where you can take citizenship, the kind of things that you may not even have thought about before. At number four comes RISER, an engaging site that lays down the law on young people and the law. The site certainly is an exciting site, it's a relevant site, it's a site which appeals to young people, uh, focusing on criminal justice um, and start trying to blow away some of the myths. The stories are really realistic on the site, they, they are engaging and from, from my perspective from students in the school I think a lot of them relate to what they are even if they're not doing the crime or you know the situation they might know a friend that has. It does link to the youth justice system by um, you know any key words that students might have heard. Um, what happens from the minute you might get arrested, if you had to be a witness, any events that might happen that students just may not know anything about. It's a very strong site, it's interesting, um, it's creative and it engages the students really well. The source of our laws obviously plays a vital role in our concept of citizenship. Explore Parliament takes position three. Parliament is notoriously difficult, whether you're looking at the House of Commons and the Houses of Parliament, whether you're looking at the European Union, which is even more dull uh, to teach. The website is informative and it's accessible. It's not tremendously jazzy, it's not got lots of um, fantastically fun activities, but the information is there and you can explore it, which is good. Um, students can also start to look at the local area as well, which is important. And it engages students, the students are interested in the material. They do have to get beyond that, I'm not interested in politics situation, which you do meet from time to time. But once they get past that and start to get past the front page of the website, they realise that actually this is something which is relevant, it is something which is important to them, and it's a useful resource. It doesn't seem to be an official site, it seems to be a factual site with everything that you need to know about Parliament and some of the information about government. And I think it's very much geared, well, equally to teachers and to students and you know for, for teachers there's so much information that they can get for lesson plans, information about things to do with Parliament uh, but from the students point of view there's games, there's again definitions of words that you may have heard of you just haven't got a clue what they mean you know I think it's a good site for students and teachers. For me the site provides everything the students need to know it's not just a textbook where you have to sit and read it. It's not like doing a PowerPoint presentation to the class and getting them to write notes or something tedious, let alone dictation. It's creative. It's interesting. It makes Parliament come to life. That's what we're after. From one great British institution to another. At number two, it's the thoroughly refreshing site from CBBC's Newsround. has a huge range of topics um, that are prepared as lesson plans from the Eurovision Song Contest to the UN resolution in Iraq. Uh, there's, abs there's something of everything on there. We think it's a very good site because it relates to what the, the students are talking about, to what the children are actually seeing on CBBC, on the Newsround programme, and are perhaps wanting to learn more about. The site stays fresh. It's easy to access and you can dip in and out of it. Um, you could, in theory, I know, spend an entire lesson, an entire hour on the subject um, in Newsround, but often just a 20-minute injection of freshness is really good. When we had the bombings in London, 
we spent longer using that site and it, it, it struggled at first but actually during the lesson it was being updated and there was information coming in which, which was staggering and it was fantastic as a teaching resource. Newsround I think is a very good example of how it can make a, a teacher's job easier because it, it has got such a lot of information um, and it is very easily accessible. The lessons are designed so that they have short activities and longer activities designed on whatever classroom uh, group of students that you have. There are available opportunities for you to develop the ideas further um, and there are also games for the students to play as well uh, which can make it a much more multimedia event. We've seen nine informative, useful sites. But what did the staff of Chestnut Grove Secondary School choose as their number one website for teachers and students of citizenship? Well, that's coming up. But first, a reminder of 10 down to 2. At 10, media and war. At 9, recycle zone. At 8, Oxfam. At seven, student voice. At six, calling the shots. At five, post-16 citizenship. At four, riser. At three, explore parliament. At two, news round. King of the Castle is a site from the Treasury that shows spending time thinking about tax can provide a good return. Redbox is number one. It's very interesting to try and teach young people what the value of paying tax is. Um, so I'm not really surprised that uh, the Treasury has produced such a good website because it's something that really needs to convey a lot of information in a quite easy to understand manner and I think, think that they've done that very well. Redbox allows them a way in. It allows them to enter a subject and to explore a subject that actually works for them. So they can understand government spending. It's a game, essentially, where there's a square and it costs a certain amount of money to maintain this square and the students raise the money by answering questions. And it's very interesting because there are moving things and you get to go into the buildings as well um, and click on various things. And when you click on a moving image, for example, there's a, a fountain or there's a bus that goes past or there's a little person that walks past, there's information that comes up on the side and in the information are the answers to the questions. And if they answer the questions correctly, they can earn 10,000 pounds, which goes towards the cost of maintaining the square. They sort of assume that the army just happens they assume that the police just are on the streets and forget actually there are spending constraints. There are things which they can and can't do. And so the Redbox website is actually really quite a good resource. To actually find a website which is fun, which is an actual game, but explains how everything works is actually very, just fantastic. I thought they were all fantastic. You'll find all the sites mentioned today and more at teachers.tv. Be a good citizen and check them out. Happy clicking.